You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. No wonder I've been doing it wrong all this time. Are you sure? That's exactly how you should eat a clipper. <sighs> no wonder I get it all over my top. Anyway, welcome to Chewing the Cards. What have you got this week, Mike? You said that you that's how you eat a clipper when you get it all over your top. Mm. What? Why are you dribbling ice cream on somebody else? This is the bottom. And I have a story about a new health craze that's sweeping the world. And then we'll learn about the science of infusion and distillation in that science, that is. We even have a game that you can play along with too. But on your screen now, you should see our contact details. It's at the Cud TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Just look for Chewing the Cud. And you can see the names of people who have reached out and said, I love, to go along the bottom of the screen. Miss brings us the showbiz news. <laughs> So, are you ready for the showbiz news? Barely. Well, buckle up, because it's what you're going to get, all right? I sound like my ex. <laughs> um, so, first of all, we have a lyric change. Oh. Mm. So, Sam Smith, uh -huh. been in the ether for quite a while. They have, yeah. So, it's the 10th anniversary of uh -huh. The Lonely Hour. Okay. And they're going to release a new edition of it. Okay. And whilst they're doing that, mm -hmm. because Sam Smith has gone through a bit of a change, or yeah. an affirmation, shall we say, rather than a change. Yes. Um, because they now consider, uh, present themselves as non-binary openly, they've changed their pronouns and, and that's how they present themselves. Some of the song lyrics of the songs are mm. a little bit gender-specific. They are, yeah. So they're going to make a few alterations... Okay, cool. Primarily to the song, the 2014 hit, Stay With Me, which was a big one, to be fair. Okay. From Guess It's True, I'm Not Good at a One Night Stand, But I Still Need Love Because I'm Just a Man. Uh -huh. It's now going to be, But I Still Need Love, Baby Understand. Ah. Oh. It's, 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 it works. It works. It tracks. It, it does all right. So, yeah. And it's something they want to make a stand with and, and, and it's important to them. Go for it. What I love about that song in particular mm -hmm. is the choir in the background. It is all Sam Smith. All of the songs that you hear sing um, in Stay With Me are Sam Smith's voice pitch shifted. Isn't that just what Annie Lennox used to do? I don't know. I think that's just what Annie Lennox used to do. It's not that original. I didn't say it was original. I said I love the fact that it was done, right? But it was done so well that you couldn't tell it wasn't a choir. And in the video, they had a choir miming it as if it was singing it, but it's actually Sam Smith's voice all the way through it. Um, I'm going to move on to the next story. I oh, think that's probably that's sensible, probably to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, do you remember Big Brother's Brian Dowling? Oh, I'm not a fan. You're not a fan? I'm not a fan. They just irritated me. Oh, I thought they were quite fun. Yeah. They've got a little baby on the way. On the way? Well, delivered. Okay. Signed, sealed and packaged. Well... I don't think they packaged them. <laughs> so, with their partner, Arthur... They are now welcoming a little baby they're calling Blue. Ah, oh, Blue Hydrangea. Right, the drag queen. Uh, they may have named her after Blue Hydrangea, actually, maybe. Arthur's a bit fit. Arthur is a bit fit. Um, I don't know much about them, but I believe they are one of the dancers or maybe one of the judges from the Irish version of Dancing with the Stars. Strictly? Yes, basically. Oh, OK. I don't know why they call it something different in other countries, but yes, yeah, Strictly. Because Strictly Come Dancing means something different. It's only sperm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're already parents to one-year-old Blake and their, their sister, Aoife, uh, who has been a surrogate to bring both of them into the world. Oh. It's a very kind thing to do for a, a family member and it gives them the joy of children. Mm -hmm. They look very, very, very happy there. They do look very, very happy. Horribly sickening, isn't it? It's because they have not had to push a small person out of their... <laughs> chuff. I was going to say reproductive area. But yeah, chuff would also work. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to look composed <coughs> when, you know, you weren't the one in stirrups. Oh, Brian looks a little bit tired there. He, he, he's... I think he's looked tired for a long time. <laughs> well, I'm happy for them. Well, Well, good for them. 
Not a massive Brian Dowling fan. Irritates me a little bit. Don't know why. Just one of those people that just, no. Rubs you up the wrong way. No, I've never done that. Never met him. Well, congratulations to those two. Congratulations. See, we sometimes we sometimes do nice news. Anyway, finally, mm-hmm. are you a fan of Little Mix? Have they not been dismixed now? Uh, well, they disbanded. For, I believe that the intention is to get back together, but they have disbanded, and it's been a while now. And some of them have released singles, etc. Okay. The next one up to do so is our Jade. Our Jade. Our Jade. Well, I say our Jade. Thelwall. Yes, that's the one. Because she, she's quite, quite the ally. Yeah, yeah Jade. She's a very, very big fan and very big supporter of drag queens and queer culture and. She, in fact, she was actually talking about this. She said, five years into Little Mix, her gay audience grew. Which it did. I'm a big fan. I, you really listen to a lot of Little Mix when I'm on the treadmill in the gym, because it's really fun. Um, but anyway, she thought, I can't keep uh, skipping the queue to get into heaven and having a lot of fun. If I'm going to be an ally, I better be an actual ally. Okay. So she went to some charities like Stonewall, etc., to, like, learn what she could do better to actually support people rather than just dining out on the pink pound. And <laughs> Dining out on the pink pound. Dining out on the pink pound. There's no innuendo in that phrase. You just see filth in everything, don't you? Dining out on the pink pound. Funnily enough, you're not the only one. <laughs> Jade also said... <laughs> P.A. <laughs> she? Oh, right, OK. So, she's been recording new songs, and uh-huh. she's been working with Tovlo. Okay. And she said the best thing about working with Tovlo, because she was like, how far can I go? Where do you want to do? What's mm-hmm. the sound? What's the vibe? All that kind of stuff. Fill your boots. Go as far as you possibly can. And apparently it's been a really fun experience, because basically the song, one of the main songs that they've come up with, mm-hmm. it's all about anal sex. Okay. She just absolutely. She apparently she loves songs when they are. I'm about to say she loves it up the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she loves it up the wrong. It is our Jade. No, she said. Um, Who can blame her? <laughs> <laughs> she loves when when a song sounds innocent and sweet, but it's really just filthy. Like that song, I I touch myself. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Wet, wet, well, wet. Good night, girl. Well, apparently. Mm, yeah, you were telling me about that wet, wet, wet earlier. Yeah. Anyway, behave. It's... I didn't say a word. Sat here quite innocently. We were told to behave. There is nothing innocent about you. Anyway, back to songs about anal sex. Like a decent grown-up story telling the news. Anyway, back to anal sex. Apparently that song might not... Because not everyone's a hit and what the studio will let you put on the album, etc. That one might not see the light of day. But apparently there is an oral sex banger definitely coming out. An oral sex banger? An oral sex banger. That, that's literally how they describe it. I think that's on purpose. <laughs> and I think she's really figured out how to be an ally to the gay community. By saying oral sex banger. <laughs> By giving us music... That are considered oral sex bangers. An oral sex banger. An oral sex banger. Brought to you by Jade Thurwell. Yeah. And that's the showbiz for this week. So she's talked about anal mm-hmm. and oral. Mm-hmm. Any other, other intercourses we're talking about? <sighs> Is there a song about felching? She might like a little bit of frottage. Frottage. I, well, see, when I first heard about frottage, right, I thought it was a new type of yoghurt. <laughs> I thought it was sex with cheese. I can see that too, but yeah, the people going, "Oh, I love frottage, man!" Like when <laughs> it's where you use dairy leaf for lube. What? When you use dairy leaf for lube, that's frottage. You've not thought that through. <laughs> Cottage cheese, I can kind of get. Oh no, that's what happens Ricotta, after. I can kind of. That's get. what happens after. Dairy Lee. Dairy Lee. A sharp, pointy bit of foil on the end of your knob. You don't. You take the foil off. You have to suck that through with your teeth. Your feelings go in ten to the dozen. If you can cope with this kind of talk, stick around, uh, because after the break, it's Mike with a buzz. (laughs) 
You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. And now we go into the deeper parts of the internet as it's Mike and the Buzz. <laughs> Sports. Hate it. Of the water variety. Mm, not a fan. Yeah, it's acid rain, we're not golden shells. Mm. Hey, no, this is actual sport, okay? Okay. So a new sport has swept the world by storm, Ooh. which involves no horses whatsoever. It's hobby horsing. Oh! I, I mm. hate sport, so you can't have an input. I, I, I would argue that hobby horsing is an art. It's been recognised as a sport. They are. So, yes, it is a... It's dominating TikTok as people hobby horse around assault courses and things. They take it so seriously. Well, proper, like, hobby horse dressage. That's, she's, she's leaping over. Yeah, dressage. No, she's leaping. It's not, it's not dressing out. A broom angle between her legs, jumping over barriers. Right. Um, I used to be a horse rider when I was a child. That's why it was quite good. Uh, there's so many things I could say, but I'm not going to. I had high, high leather boots for most of my childhood. Uh -huh. Very tight trousers. Mm -hmm. OK. So, yeah. Um, and, and did the priest like them? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that being very, very fun. They take it seriously. It's not fun. They made it an actual sport. Well, see, that's my point. If you considered it as an art form, which I would, then it's fun. It's expressive. It's good. It's because it's become like a sport. It's shit and unenjoyable. Look at the seriousness on that woman's face and that person's face. Too. Exactly. Far too serious. See, boo sports. Boo. Yeah. So, would you would you take up that sport? I I I, I would I take up the art form. I, I'd enjoy I'd enjoy. Yeah, I I think it's just daft silly fun. But. I know people who do Morris dancing, and that's not too dissimilar. Skipping about with a rod and then backing people up against things. Morris backing dancing? People, that's not what I went to say. That, that's, that's, that's going out at night. <laughs> I went whacking people around the head. Uh, yeah. So Morris dancing has got a tradition because it's, it's a folklore and it's a, yeah. a way of getting rid of spirits and things and all that sort of bringing in spring and shit. Yes. Um, this is people that are grown-ass adults running around pretending to be riding horses. Yes. There's very really different things there. Not really. It's like the people that play Quidditch and think that they're flying on a broom. <laughs> Running around with a broom between your legs like that. <laughs> what are you doing I there? have it's seen a bunch of... damage to your thighs. Because there's official rules on how uh -huh. to play broomstick um, Quidditch. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's a bit bonkers, doesn't make, but sport in general doesn't make any sense to me. I, I like athletics as sport. I, I like the physical form. Pouch. OK, maybe college wrestling. OK. That might be the one sport I'm into, for obvious reasons. What are the obvious reasons? Tight singlets on very fit men, grappling and struggling with each other. OK. How long has it been missed? It's been 45 years. <laughs> 82 years is the phrase. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're single. The bad Titanic. Uh, I think you're not quoting the same thing I'm quoting. You were quoting Titanic and got it wrong and now you're trying to say it's because of your birthday and you're trying to pretend you're a virgin and there's no way you're a virgin apart from on the impossible. Anyway, moving on. Do you like to go for a walk? No, we know that. Why am I asking that question? We've had that conversation before. He damaged his knee in 1920-something. Can't walk since. Um, falls off stage, he's pissed and says, oh, there was a step there I didn't know about. Um, why are you laughing? It's true. I know it's true. Oh, there was a step there. You've gone up there. It's <coughs> another cider. Yeah. Anyway, there's a, a new way of exercising, OK, that is good for you. I don't mind exercise. I hate sport. I like exercise. That's OK. This is exercising. I like exercise. And it's called having a fart walk. A fart walk. A fart walk. Is that what you're just trying to be discreet? And... No, no, no. This is going for a walk to purposefully decrease the amount of gas in your stomach. Squeezing out. OK. So they've done tests, right? 
And what they've worked out is that the people that walk every day, especially after a meal, fart less. Okay, because what a fart is, it's trapped gas. Yes. That builds up and builds up until it finally gets out. It's, it's I understand the pushed science. Pushed out of... the poop chute. Yeah. Uh, right? Mm-hmm. What they've done is they've inserted the tube into people's poop chutes, right, and had them stay still to see how long it takes for the gas to come out. And then the same people with the same diet, they've done the same thing, but on a walk. And small amounts of gas, just every time you walk, will just... Boop, 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 boop. Oh, not from you, obviously. Like a clapping seal. Um... But little bits of fart will escape. And so it means that you're not having a full fart. It's just little bits. And so you don't leave a smell behind as much. So going for a walk called a fart walk is good. And, and these scientists that conned these people into letting them stick tubes up their bum Look, went to the ha- whole bother of writing a paper to justify their perversions. Look, all I did was put on a white coat. They assumed I'm a scientist. <laughs> Can I put this tube up? Yeah. Oh, is this for science? Let's say yes. Let's say yes. I think that's a brilliant idea. So if you have a big meal and you start to feel a bit gassy and things, Christmas Day sprouts, go for a walk. If I've had a big meal, I don't want to go for a walk. And that's the perfect time to have one. Because that's going to stop you building up the gas and making the lethargy worse. Because your stomach feeling full causes you to feel tired. Well, that, that is true. So by having that walk, it reduces the gas, so you're more likely to not have a sleep afterwards. I think that's important medical research and that person has been grabbing their inner book cheeks for far too long on the screen. <laughs> so, um, if like Mr, you, go on a little walk to vacate the bowels, why not share it with us? And we are at The Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. You don't go on a holiday much, do you? No, not very often. No. We're too busy doing this show and making things right for you. Um, so... <laughs> Get what you pay for, I suppose. Um, um, have you ever heard the awkward balloon? The awkward balloon? The awkward balloon, where you just hold a bal- an imaginary balloon like that and say it's the awkward balloon. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm surprised you've not heard of that. You've, you've heard of losing the game, so I would have thought you'd have heard about the awkward balloon. Anyway, a gentleman in China has been arrested for smuggling 100 snakes on a plane in his pants. Ooh! It... It was stopped because one was was seen slipping out. Ooh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Of his of his trouser area, shall we say? But, mm. Yeah, a hundred snakes. That's a lot Life. of snakes. Yeah, they'd be wiggling about. They were wiggling about, and there were some were constrictors. So who needs a cock ring? Um, and it, and others were venomous. What the hell was he thinking? He was thinking, these snakes are very expensive, let's get them over the border. I can sell them for a profit. He must have been very ginger when he sat down. Uh, don't think he was a ginger. Ginger as in sitting down gingerly. Oh, he must be very gentle sitting down. Yes. It's like, it's like going, oh, I want to sit down, quick, bleach my hair, ginger. And make no, me white. No, I was just using oldie worldy English. You know, it's just pronounced old world English. <laughs> It's like the Y in ye isn't a Y, it's a thorn, it's a th sound. So it's actually the old bookshop, not ye oldie bookshoppy. Anyway, snakes. Anyway, snakes on a plane. Um, not the movie, just random gentleman. Um, so yeah, he was smuggling 100 live snakes and he started to slip out when he got to Hong Kong. Uh, so and did they went, catch him in the airport then at the other end? Yeah. Um, Seeing what's going on here, love? <laughs> But that's exactly how they talk to the <laughs> that's exactly how they talk. All right, love, what's that sticking out your trousers? So, so John Smith from Burnley, working in in Hong Kong Airport, right? Why is that funny? <laughs> John Smith, he went to work at Hong Kong Airport. Had a great career. No, the the guy with the snakes in his pants. What happened to the guy with the snake in his pants? What happened to the guy with snakes in his pants? He was arrested for smuggling stra- snakes. <laughs> 
in his pants <laughs> across international borders. It's illegal. How long did he go down for, though? I suppose that has you got with the guy in his prison cell, but I was going to say, I said, don't think he went down. Was there snakes on him? It's all from the buzz this week. Don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Generally, what's going on here? <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Mike. Oh, oh, oh! It breaks my brain, honestly. Breaks my brain. Stick around, because coming up next, we have a game to play in our game of the week. Welcome back, and yes, you are watching Chewing the Cud. We're going to play a little game in our game of the week, and this one is for the man who wants... I don't think I should read that out. It's Mike. A little sparkly UFO. <laughs> Game of the week. Right now, it's time for the Gobby Game Show with Mike. I'm not. What songs have you got for us this time? Well, I guess that's what I need to figure out. I am ready. <laughs> That was very softly done. Yeah, don't worry, Gallery, I did get it. There was no need. <laughs> I was just waiting to see him explode and into the chorus. Oh, that was Yes, 99 red balloons, or Luft balloons, if you want to go with the original German. Why? Hmm? Why? Hmm? Why? 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 Oh, you want to know the artiste? Yeah. Uh, Nina, I think. Uh, I Is it Nina? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. I know more than I let on. Um, that's one. Why, that's a fair one, I'd say spit it out, but come on. Oh no. What is the last before the second four and then it is the hours that we found it in the harness of the nit nit in the flower, but the more that I have to fasten for flower, but not if the bottom of it and not the fresh of me hour. Tick tock, no. Kesha. No. Not tick tock by Kesha. No. You can see where I was going with that one, though, right? Well, that was a little bit of a man, a little bit of a man, a little bit of a man. I don't know what that would be, though. Okay. It's second. Uh huh. Minute. Two minutes. No. Second. Second. Minute. Minute. Hour. Hour. Five. Four. Thing. Second Minute Hour by Geordie, who is an LGBTQIA plus artist. Find them now on, on, on iTunes. Support them. They're amazing. Oh, that's one. Gallery, do you have a clue? Gallery guest, please. <laughs> I like that. No, don't have, don't, don't have a Scooby. Beyonce. Texas. Beyonce. Yeah. I didn't know Texas did a song called Beyonce. No, oh, Beyonce did a song about Texas. <laughs> Beyonce did a song called Texas. Next, please. Gallery, you're not helping. So I don't 
I'm not doing very well this week. If mm. you can figure it out at home, I, I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> Are we talking Miley Cyrus? <laughs> Wrecking Ball. <laughs> God blimey, you don't have to murder these songs and even the bull gag's got no excuse. But the, the, the song very high. And Sweet Dreams. Oh. If I didn't get that, I, I should really just give in life now. There, there, there's no way I should not be able to get Sweet Dreams by the inmates. Gallery, any clue? No, they don't get it either. Uh, hmm. Is it not a song? Are you just having a mental breakdown? Is everything okay? Well, I haven't found one. Do we need to call someone? Hey, on hall. Ghostbusters. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean the Ghostbusters. I mean your therapist. And all the girlies say I'm pretty fly for oh, a white, white guy. Uh, ding, 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 ding. Uh, well. Uh, Bloodhound Gang. No. <laughs> no. Not Bloodhound no. Gang. No, it wasn't. It was the Offspring. Oh, Offspring, yes. Oh, of oh, f oh no. Mm -hmm. I feel shame. Mm -hmm. I feel utter, utter shame. Please, anybody who knew me in the 90s, don't kick me in the balls for this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kick you in the balls. Right on. Come on. Right. I need to get past I the shame of getting that wrong. I said it's better than it is now. I said it's better than it is right now. I said little, little. I said I'm going to fall in this house. I said I'm going to fall in this house. I said it's better than it is right now. I, I think I know the song, but I can't remember who it was by. I want to. I think I better leave right now. Mm -hmm. Why? Travis? No. Will Young. Oh! It, 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 uh, Will Young. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my kind of music. Very nice fellow, though. No, I was fucking off the road, or else I'm well, I, I, uh, that is my kind of music. I just happen to have dementia. Telephone, Beyonce and Gaga. Uh -huh. Yay, I got one right. I think that might be the <laughs> first one I've probably got right this week. Finally, Finally. <laughs> yeah, all right. uh, comedy gold. Uh huh. Good job you're a TV presenter and not a stand up. In fact, I am. That's fair. That. Anyway. Another song, um, please, Mike. Okay. You know, it's great TV when you can just see the top of your bold bonds. We should just draw something on your head. We no. could do advertising. Promote things on the show. Yeah. I, I, I could just see the brand logo for Purcell. Just, just marked out there. Or maybe a Mars bar. 
We're finished. I'm waiting for a song. Uh, George Michael. Why did that take us so long? Uh, it's uh, been a while. Uh, huh? It's been a while. It's not the law, sir. And I it's nearly said now. boy George, and after my f up with uh, the offspring, uh, confused with the boy, uh, Bloodhound gang, I, I, I thought I'd better, you know, mull it over before I made a cock of myself. Love and fire. Is that all you can remember? Muller Kintyre. Yeah. Uh, by Wings? Or is it just Paul McCartney? Oh, fucking <laughs> Sorry, the way you you look, you look like a goldfish giving a TED talk. What? <laughs> Just the way you were moving. <laughs> You do look like a goldfish when you're doing that. What? You look like a goldfish. Oh, enough of that. Coming up next, it's craft. It's not even craft. Oh, whatever. Um, coming up next, it's um, that science that is with me. You're supposed to. It's like too busy laughing. Stick around. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we've got something that's going to be a deep infusion in that science, that is. That science, that is. So, you got very excited when you saw the things in front of you and actually asked whether I was trying to f*** you. Um, the answer to that is no. But have you ever wondered how they get flavours into spirits? Um, mm, yes. Okay, because there's two ways. You can do it through distillation. Mm -hmm. So you can ferment, so, like, so if you make like grape, grape wine. I um, make wine at home, yeah. Right, you can then distill it and it will have flavours from that. Oh, okay. okay. Um, or you can put things into the already distilled spirit and re-distill it and it will, will take up the flavours. For that, you need a distiller's licence. For this, you need a distiller's licence as well, officially. But um, what you can also do is infuse drinks with fruits and things. Ooh. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make alcoholic tea. Ooh. OK. Are we steeping old fruit? We're, well, it's not old fruit. It's quite young fruit. Because I've heard you enjoy a young fruit. So the first thing we need to do is, because we're going to be putting things into the bottle, Mm -hmm. So we need to make space in the bottle, so we need to empty out the vodka that's in here. You're saying I need to drink some booze? No, I'm asking you to pour it into the glass that I've given you. So you just pour it away into one of the glasses, so you just open up and pour pour away. Some people are no fun. I'm lots of fun. You don't want to empty the whole bottle, though, because you want the... So about that much? You want about half the, half the main neck of the bottle left. OK. OK. So, we're just going to pop that to one side for a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to pop that there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in a selection of fruits and some chocolate as well, because we're going to give it a chocolatey finish. <laughs> I've been known to enjoy a chocolatey finish. I've heard. So, what I want you to do is mm -hmm. just... Um, is just chop some of the fruit up as small as you can, and we're just going to pop it into the bottle. Uh, uh, all of the fruit, or can't we um, any well, combination you, can, you like? You can do any combination you like. Okay, all the fruits I've given you, so I've given you cherries mm -hmm. and strawberries and blueberries and things. I they, they all go well together. They do, uh, but I think for me, cherry and chocolate is the best combo. This, it is a good combo. Because uh, I quite like uh, a, a Black Forest Castle. Mm. How 70s of you. I, I know. Who would have thought of me who likes something from the 70s? I know. Considering you're wearing flares again. So, um, you don't have to worry about de-stoning the fruit either. So, like, the cherry's got a stone in it. You can just pop that in as well. Oh, okay. 
that makes, that makes life easier. You, I had you can eat the it. fruit afterwards if you want to, but you don't have to. How many or much of the how much substance matter do we want to be shoving in? You want you want a fair amount. Okay, obviously the stronger flavours you want less of. So like the cherries I'd put a couple in, but the strawberries I'd put a lot in if you put in a lot in. Yes, the strawberries aren't exactly the most killer. They're not flavors. known for being for being strong. So Mind you, lots of things flavoured strawberry in the world. Oh. It seems to be like the first go-to, let's have a fruity flavour after orange. Well, orange is used because it's um, it's very easy to get the flavour from because of the oil in the skin. Mm -hmm. um, raspberry, did you know, you know, the fr how you get like, um, oh, that fog is kicking. Um, <laughs> the um, blue raspberry flavour. Yes. How it's always bright blue and you wonder why it's bright blue. Yeah. That's because the variety of raspberry is actually a blue, it's called a blue variety. Mm. That's mighty interesting. It is, that's a different thing. <laughs> that's a game that we play, Mr. You're confused. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, am I popping, am I I'll popping it into the bottle? Into the bottle, into the vodka, into the waiting vodka that's just sat there waiting quite happily for you to just... Mm. I think I, so, I went to London Pride... Uh -huh. A fair, fair few years ago. Okay. And somebody had a vodka there. Yeah. And I don't know how long, maybe you can tell me. Uh -huh. But it had one blade of grass in it. Uh huh. And we drank that, and it did taste of, and it was absolutely refreshing. Just a single blade of grass in vodka. And it just, it was, this does taste like grass. It I don't does. know why I know what the flavour of grass is, but it was really refreshing. So that's. Oh, that's marketing, right? Because the vodka itself is made from distilling the, um, like a wine made from grass kind of thing. So they distill that, and that's what's got the flavour of grass in it. Not that single blade. That single blade is just a blade of grass. Oh no, no, this was not a sold product. This wasn't. A, this was something somebody did handmade. Yeah, it's they've they've re bottled buffalo vodka for you just to make them sound amazing. Um, How disappointing! I know. People lie. Mm, chocolate's good. I, I I choose to believe my fantasy rather than your made up reality. <laughs> you prefer to fantasy <laughs> rather than what? I know it didn't make sense when I said this. Anyway, um, I've done I've done the cherry. Okay, you're just doing cherry then. Uh, uh, no, I was going to put chocolate in as well, put but I just chocolate in as well then. Just go in straight after. Just just pop it straight in. Just pop it straight in. I you need to be chocolate. chopping up as well though. You need to do choppy choppy. You need, need to do choppy choppy. Choppy choppy, because that's what gets you to the, into the bottly bottly thing. Okay. Oh. I'm getting very stained fingers. Yeah. Me too. It's all, yeah. It's all very. This lucky. reminds me. Very, very much. At the time I did, um, um, what is it? Pims. I, I in a park. Pims at home. A, I enjoyed a bit of a Pims last night. Oh, did you? I did enjoy a Pims last night, yes. No, um, me and a few of my, my friends from uni. We sat in the park, um, just it made a jug of pims at someone's flat, and because they lived opposite from the, the park, I used to go in and, and come out. How upper class aspiring of a drunk were you when you were in university? Like most people I knew were like getting cheap cider. You're going for a pims in the park. Yeah, that's what you do in it when it's sunny. Mad Dog 2020 by the swings. MD. That's what you should be doing. Why are you calling it Mad Dog? Everybody knows it's MD 2020. <laughs> Then there was this time I was out in Brighton mm -hmm. at the Pavilion, and I had a bottle of White Lightning. Oh, now 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 you're getting more to my level. Well, I didn't drink it. I was cleaning things off with it. <laughs> I didn't put that foul stench of a thing in my body. <laughs> After knowing what you put do put in your body, I don't think you can say a thing. I think I really think I can. So, have you chopped up your fruit? I'm chopped up as much fruit as I'll have a hot one on. And you're now eating the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Well, that chocolate at a furniture shop. Because that's where I buy my food from these days. Furniture shops. Mainly balls and sausages. It all looks a little bit horrible at the bottom there. Well, did you did you chop and pop it in or did you master it up and then put it in? I chopped and popped it in. Because I've chopped and popped it in and it looks fine. It also looks more like a fruit salad. Yeah, so now what we're going to do is we're going to lid it. Okay. Why is screw top so hard? And then I said screw tops, not tops. <laughs> then you're going to shake it. 
Like a Polaroid picture. Well, that's Polaroid. So that God. Your musical references are very, very old. At least I know the difference between the offspring and <laughs> Nirvana or whatever it was. Yeah. So, yeah, you're shaking up the, the thing because it's infusing. Yeah. Once you're infused, you, you just need to top it back up then. So you're putting more vodka in. You're putting some of the vodka in that you took out. Again, you like to do these experiments where I'm dealing with lots of fluids above electricals. Don't f spill it then. Or and you do. never give me a funnel. Well, you keep asking for a funnel, but I say no because I don't want to give you a funnel. You want me to die. Oh. <laughs> now I have a problem. Because it's very hot in the studio. And everybody knows the vod vodka evaporates at temperatures. He's getting pissed, ladies and gentlemen. But it's evaporated out my glass, so I've not got vodka to put back in. Chin chin. Didn't say drink it. Don't drink it. You drink your vodka and say that's so unprofessional. So I've got a lovely drink in several months' time. Yeah. You could drink it now. But it won't taste it very much. Well, it tastes of vodka. Which apparently is delicious. I don't know. I better check that theory. What? What's the name of this thing? <laughs> Crafty thing. It's things. science that is. If you can't get any or any no. No, no. Oh. What's that That's one? not how it goes anyway. What is it one, is it? Professionalism. 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 You can't get any or any professionalism. Be a crafty science, that is. That science, that is. Yeah, I said again. It's quite disgraceful, really. Lack of professionalism. I came on this show to show you science things. You did come on the show to show me science And I've things. showed you science things. And you sampled your own wares doing so. And there was vodka on the desk and it was delicious. And you're now in a state. I am the professor of a professionalism. <sighs> Do you see what I have to put up with, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else in between? Well. It's almost the end of the show. Remember to look for Out The Could TV and social medias. And if you want to catch up, then the YouTube. Yeah. Paragon of professionalism. Uh, I'm thank not a parrot. What do you mean a parrot? I'm oh, sorry, Mist. I'm sorry. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry, Mist. And we'll see you again soon. I'm going to be sick.